So welcome back to Pop Dynamite. Hey guys, and today we're here with a bit of a different video. It's more of like a behind the scenes kind of video. So essentially, if I bring the camera person in here. So as you can see, we, I've got two drives in my, well three drives, including my SSD, but two drives in my system. One's a media drive with all photos and old videos we've converted. And this one here is the one that houses our runoff gaming, which is all our folders and stuff like that. And if I bring this up here, which is Intel Rapid Storage Technology, now I don't know if a lot of you know this, but I have my stuff set up in a RAID array. So it's known as a RAID 1 array. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of a problem here. So if I click on this one here, you'll see that there's one drive kind of missing here. And then we still have one four terabyte drive running well. So if you come over here, I've actually, well, I've taken out the drive, but our status is degraded. So in other words, all my information here on this runoff gaming side, I have a potential to lose. So today, essentially, in this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at fixing this and kind of showing you the process on how to fix a RAID array and stuff like that because I thought it'd be cool and it's kind of fun to do. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to hook up that old drive, well, not old drive, that's actually a very new drive, but I'm going to hook up the new failed drive and show you what it looks like in the post screen in the Intel Rapid Storage Technology screen. I'm going to shut down. So a little bit about my computer as well. I'm running an SSD for my OS. So that's a 256 gig crucial SSD. 16 gig of RAM, a 1080 Ti from EVGA. I totally forgot for a second there. Um, and then, yeah, those two RAID 1 arrays. And if people don't know what a RAID 1 array is, I might explain it in the next few seconds to you. But it'll cut to me. I'm just going to go down here now. So basically, there are a few different types of RAID arrays, but for the sake of this video, I'll just be covering the RAID 1 array. With that said, if you want more computer nerdy goodness, let me know and I might do a follow-up explaining all the other types of RAID to you. Anywho, a RAID 1 array is a very simple and straightforward array. It's used to create redundancy, which essentially means if something fails, we have a backup. So the way RAID 1 does this is by taking two drives and using what's known as mirroring. So whatever you put on one drive is then immediately copied over to the second drive that is mirroring the first. The drawbacks of this type of array is that you only get the storage of one hard drive, despite putting two into your system, because then obviously you wouldn't get the redundancy that you're after. <laughs> Also, the RAID array that I have is done as software RAID, as opposed to hardware RAID. Basically, as the name implies, either software dictates how your RAID is built and when files are transferred and etc, or hardware does. Now, software and hardware RAIDs are a little different, with software RAIDs being more or less the trickier of the bunch. Basically, with a software RAID, you need to make sure you're using the same or very similar hard drives. Otherwise, this could cause issues with your RAID. In addition to this, it's not recommended to take drives out on a regular basis or even swap SATA cables around. In doing this, you can degrade or completely fail your array and lose all precious data. So, if you plan on doing your own RAID array, get someone who knows what they're doing to help you or let a professional do the job. Because at the end of the day, your data is far more important than almost anything else. So, as you can see here, I've got two drives here and two drives here. That's part of one RAID array, and that's a part of the other RAID array. So this drive here is actually the drive that we're having problems with. It is one of the newest drives in the system. These two here are actually less than a year old, and they're Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives, so they shouldn't have had a reason to fail, but they have. So, so first off, I'm going to plug this drive back in here. So we're all good and plugged in. Keep in mind as well, as I would have explained, these need to be in their proper SATA ports. Now, you can take the SATA ports out if you know what you're doing. I don't recommend doing it a lot, but they need to go back in the exact same spot where you took them out of, because otherwise you do have a chance of degrading and kind of corrupting your RAID. So now that that's plugged in, I'm going to move this back up slightly. We're going to come back out. I'm going to turn this on and we're going to focus on this screen here. You may have heard there's a bit of a click. That's an older drive, but see here, if I go control I. So this is the Intel rapid storage technology in the post screen. So this shows where your RAIDs are, if they're normal, failed or degraded or whatever. And as you can see right there, there we have one failed drive so that's a part of the volume one raid which is where all that runoff gaming stuff is stored now my second drive here is degraded and that's because essentially the first one has failed so there is a chance that some of the information on this drive has been corrupted be it runoff gaming or whatever else i have on there so that is a bit of a worry but hopefully i'm not gonna get that fixed so basically what i'm gonna have to do now i'm gonna have to take out this drive here that failed drive which i know which starter port it is but raid id volume is zero and i'm gonna have to take that out and we're gonna have to go try and get a new drive hopefully Hopefully I'm actually going to get one for free over at Umart because this is less than a year old and these drives have 10 year warranties and it's 
already failed. Which sucks, whereas this drive here, another two Seagate drives, this volume two right here with all my media on it. Those drives have been in this system for three to four years now and they're still chugging amazing. But anyway guys, we're gonna go head off to Umart now and hopefully come back with a new drive. So see you in a sec. So we're back. Perfect timing by the UE Boom 3 over there. We're back. So essentially we didn't actually go to, where is the drive? We didn't actually go back to Umart to see if we could exchange it. Now the reason why we didn't do that yet is because despite the device saying that it's failed entirely, I took it and um, I put it in one of the little external readers for hard drives and stuff like that. And essentially I could see all of the data there. Well, majority of, I didn't really see anything missing, but there still could be some corrupt files on there. But with that being said, I kind of need to now determine if it's this that's failed or the computer itself and one of the SATA ports or the motherboard. I still have another SATA cord as well. So we're gonna test to see if it was a cord. But before we do, what I've got here is I've got an old archaic system. Yeah, get ready. SATA to IDE, USB 2.0, um, or SATA slash I IDE to USB 2.0 adapter. Yeah, we're getting a little bit janky over here, but that's because that's the way we roll, or I roll. Yeah, so see here we have our nice little hand SATA adapter, USB end. So basically, I'm gonna plug the solder into here. That's how you used to do it in the old days. And then, the solder into this drive over here. As you can see, I'm gonna pop it in that slot just over there. Boom, shakalaka. Plug this bad boy into my computer. And now you may be wondering, how do you get power? Well, that was the extra thing that we have in here. It's kind of a cool little janky thing right here, but it's a, I don't wanna take this out because it's actually very difficult to get in, but it's a Molex connector, essentially to give us power to the hard drive and this one just plugs it into an old PowerPoint. So I'm gonna quickly plug this one into the PowerPoint down here. Are we looking for light? Do we need more light? Yeah, fun fact, we, we got a few extra things today instead of doing what we were meant to and we may have gotten a new LifeX bulb. Those things are really cool. So I can be like to my phone, where is it? Hey Siri, turn on the light. Done. Nailed it, <laughs> so cool. Hey Siri, turn off the light. She seems so bitchy now. I've asked her to do that like 14 times. She's not having it now. <laughs> Thank you for the sound effect. <laughs> You're welcome. Do Who the fuck am I, Batman? <laughs> well, he does have like the big computery thing, and that's how he finds out everything. The so, bat pewter. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that thing. Pewter. So essentially, we have plugged that one in now to the power. So if I click the handy dandy switch over here on we can hear our drive spinning up Ooh. what i might do i might actually turn that off again and get you guys to have a listen because it did sound like uh, a little bit of clicking noise yeah so here i'll turn it on again have a listen yeah that bit of scratch there it should be okay but i don't know I don't trust the hard drive now. I'm a bit worried. But hey, that's okay. We're plugged in here, so we should actually be able to read the drive. But it's not here. So we're going to go into disk. What the hell did I click? That's that's another video. Um, disk management is what we're going to go to. You must initialize the disk before local disk manager can access it. Yeah, so that looks like it is there. Has a signature collision with another. Ah, okay. So I think I know why that would be. Now I can't assign a drive letter by the looks of it to this card. So what it's saying is basically it's having a little conflict here since disk three and disk one are essentially a part of the same RAID array. So the reading is like the same drive. I think that's why it's getting a little bit annoyed here. I'm gonna have to try and figure, yeah, CSGPT. I'm gonna have to try and figure out a way around this. I don't actually know of a way around this. Well, I'm gonna try and fix this issue and we'll be back in a second. <laughs> Hopefully with it fixed. Basically we're back again and I was able to get the drive to work. As we can see that data D there is actually this drive. The way that we know that is if we come back down in here, I did disconnect the secondary drive here that was part of its RAID array. So essentially that RAID array with all the runoff gaming stuff has been taken offline and I'm plugging this one in externally. And as we can see here, we kind of have everything. So if we go into the runoff gaming, we've got our organized raw footage in here. I've got uh, Minecraft, Winnie, Rob. We have his footage. We can scrub through the footage. Everything runs okay. I'm gonna go back as well. I'm gonna go into some Destiny. We recorded some Destiny 2 for a second. This is footage that you've never seen before and you may never see. But when the full second came out, we recorded it. <laughs> it's all there. It's all working okay. So by the looks of it, the drive is actually okay. So weird, right? But what we're gonna do before we say that the drive is absolutely totally okay and we're just gonna slap it in and blame the motherboard and try and fix something here. What we're actually gonna do is we are going to run CMD and we're gonna do check 
disc. So I should be able to allocate actually really quick which disc we are checking. So I'll bring it over here. I forgot how to actually point to a drive. I think if I just do check disc D. So there we go. So by the looks of it, we are going to check through. So this is using Windows essentially to check the disc to make sure that everything's okay. Um, so basically we're gonna let this run and kind of see what it brings up because the hard drive still could very well be damaged. We don't actually know. Hey, look, there's me. I can see myself through the camera. That's crazy. But yeah, so the disc actually may still be corrupted or broken in some way. So we're going to try and let this run and see what it comes back with. See you in a sec. So essentially we ran the check disc here and I'm actually looking at other check discs commands to see if we can use something to fix it a little bit better than just check the disc. But it did go right. It was drive D that we needed to check. And if we come in and have a look, you'll see here that there really isn't too much going on that's wrong. Um, so there were errors found on the disc. A disc read error occurred in a few of these spots here. Until I kind of go into it a little bit more, I don't know if that's bad or not. It could just be, I don't know if that's a few bad sectors on the drive or just a few corrupt files, which could have happened because the RAID array did fail. Now, if it's just a few files, that's not really bad. It's something we're gonna have to live with. I don't know, should I try and fix the errors or just leave the drive and rebuild the array? You know what, screw it. We're gonna try and fix the errors. So we're gonna do slash F here and that's gonna fix the errors that it finds. So we're gonna let it run because it shouldn't actually take too long. That actually took like five seconds after we stopped recording. Um, but yeah, we're gonna let it run and see what it does to fix it. Because I've never actually done this one before using, well, using Windows check disk. I've only used it to find bad sectors, not to actually try and fix them. So it's a bit of a learning curve for me. Hopefully it doesn't lose any data. I mean, I might bring it up over here. I might also bring up our resource monitor. So we're not hitting any of the disks that we have inside. It's this external one here. So that's, yeah, we're hitting it 100% this too. Covering orphans, Jesus Christ. Windows directory getting morbid up in here. Oh, you can still see my face, God damn it. But it's done. Completed, fast process, check this is verifying. So there's still a disk read error. So I don't know exactly what that did to fix it, but we still all have our stuff here. So I think what we're gonna have to do now what we're really gonna have to do is kind of test the board a bit more because by the seams of it, the disc may actually be okay. I am gonna go through that check disc and kind of read it a little bit more and make sure I can make sure it's not the disc having a massive fold and it's just a few files because I'll be honest, I didn't exactly know what that was saying. I'm gonna find out though, that's okay. But then we might have to do some testing on the motherboard itself. Now it is an older computer. The computer itself and the motherboard that's in there is about five, six years old now. So it is getting pretty old, so it might indeed be time for an upgrade but if i'm doing an upgrade i kind of want to do it properly so i kind of want to get everything new in there and that costs a lot of money we'll see what we have to do we're going to do some spot checks i'm going to continue with the hard drive here now which you won't see just making sure that that's okay but then we'll bring you back when we have a look at the motherboard and take the computer out and see in fact if it's just a sata cable or something like that that's actually caused the issue so we'll be back in a sec so we're back and the squat and everything. Yeah, I, have to fart, dude. <laughs> I feel very tall as well, sitting at my desk like this. I'm like, me behemoth. Hang on, that makes you feel taller. Nope. Because oh. <laughs> you look shorter when I'm like this, so if I go, <laughs> you look taller. <laughs> <sighs> well, anywho, um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, go to bed. <laughs> Nice.